Before we leave the graphing part behind, I just want to make a couple other quick comments. Um, let me reiterate that um, I per personally require my students to fill in every dot that fills in on their grid. So even though we only made the table go that far, we would have to go farther and go, you know, negative two, um, five would go to negative four, six would go to negative um, six, and so on. Oops, seven would go to negative eight and 8 would go to negative 10. So you don't necessarily have to put all of them in the table, but you often, for me, have to fill in every point. And once you get the pattern going, which is what I was about to say, um, there's another way to deal with this, which is you, you can see that there's a pattern. Hopefully you can see there's a pattern. And we're going to come back to that pattern in a little bit. But it's basically, hey, you know, every time my x increased by 1, right, then my y went down by oh, okay then my y went down by negative 2 that's because negative 2 is equal to my slope right down 2 over 1 down 2 over 1 down 2 right 1 down 2 right 1 and so on okay so yes that leads to my other point which is i know that there is um, a pattern thing here, you know, and a lot of students learn that pattern and they just would rather do it that way and that's totally fine. I just wanted you to see this method of plotting points, but you don't have to do that. You can start at six, go down to right one, down to right one. Most students know that method and that's totally fine. But you should be able to find a table of points if you had to, which leads me to my other comment, which is the calculator. So this is all the graphing stuff up on the top, these, these top row of buttons, that's the graphing stuff. So if you go to y equals, and clear out any old equations you might have, so kind of go down and press clear. And then you want to type negative 2. Now notice it's the negative button down here in the corner, not the minus sign over here. But negative 2x, that's the xt button, um, plus 6. Enter. So there's your equation, negative 2x plus 6. Negative is this button down here. X is this xt 0 and it looks like it's xt theta and if you want to know that's a Greek letter it looks like an O but it's theta right if you type that and then you go to second press the second button and then above your graph button see in blue how it says table so you click that second graph and you can see up here there's a table of points which are all the points we just got for this table right now nobody told you by plotting points that you had to do it by hand. You could have used this table feature. So you go to y equals, you enter your equation, then you go second table, and you can go up and down and you can get different numbers out of it. Right? So you can totally use the calculator to help yourself. That is A-OK -okay with me. Right? So the calculator will give you all these points. The calculator will also graph it. Sorry, I had a bad window before. Um, so I hit zoom in case you were wondering what I just did. I hit zoom and then I picked standard because I just want the regular ordinary window. Standard is negative 10 to 10, negative 10 to 10, right? So all these buttons up here, these five buttons and their little shift counterparts, stat plot, table set, and so on, that's all graphing calculator stuff, right? The rest of it's just calculator. But those five buttons are the graphing part of the calculator. So we've learned a method for graphing by plotting points. Now you can do it by hand or you can use the calculator to help yourself. When you're in my class you're going to have to plot every single point that fits on the grid. That's just how I roll. Okay? But you plot them all out. You can use a ruler and you, t and you line them up. Now I know there's another way and that other way is totally fine for graphing. Um, I just wanted to remind you of this method for graphing because um, for quadratics and stuff this table thing is what you're going to have to do later on in the course. All right, so now what about a linear equation? A linear equation is y equals mx plus b, right? That's the standard form for most linear equations. There is a special kind of linear equation that is x equals a, and we'll talk about that in another page or so, right? But those are your two basic forms of linear equations. All right, now let's think about intercepts. Intercepts are where your graph intersects the x-axis. So let me draw a quick picture. Here we go. So I got my y-axis, I got my x-axis, and then I have this line here, this y, this red line, right? So that red line intersects the graph at two points. It intersects it down here. That's the y-intercept. And it intersects it over at the other side, which is the x-intercept. Hold on. In 
insert that circle over there. All right. There we go. So we got the y-intercept down here. That's the one where it hits the y-axis. And then you got the x-intercept up here. That's where it hits the x-axis. Now, then the question becomes for yourself, hmm, let's think about this, right? If it's an intersection point, that means something special is going on with those numbers, right? Now, what's happening? So if you look at, let's say, the x-intercept for a second, you've moved to the right, but you haven't moved up or down at all, right? So what you have to do is you have to substitute 0 in for to find the x-coordinate of the x-intercept, you substitute 0 for y, and then you solve for the variable that's left, which would be x, right? So you plug in 0 for x, which means 0 for y, and you solve for x. And then the same thing's going to happen here for the y-intercept. You're going to substitute 0 for x, and you're going to solve for y. Hold on one second. Let me get this all cleaned up. There we go. So substitute 0 for y, solve for x, and then substitute 0 for x and solve for y. That is how you find your intercepts without actually having to bother with the whole um, uh, y equals mx plus b business. You don't have to do all that rigmarole in order to find intercepts. Okay. All right, so let's show that this lovely equation right here has the x-intercept 2, 0 and the y-intercept 0, 4. Well, that's actually not going to be too hard because we have the intercepts. So all you need to do is show that this solution or this problem point, excuse me, is a solution of that equation. So you want to go y equals 2 times 2. So you want to put 2 in for x, and then that would be negative 4 plus 4, and that would in fact be 0. So the x-intercept is equal to, oopsie, I'm so sorry. There we go. <laughs> sorry about that. I took the wrong thing. So 2 comma 0. And then you want to do it again for the y-intercept, right? So there's your x-intercept, and then the y-intercept, same deal. So you want to put, um, let's see, what did they say it was? 0, comma, 4. Okay, well, 4 is actually the y-intercept. So you say, okay, I'm going to put 0 in for x, right? That's negative 2 times 0, which is 0, which is 4, right? So the y-intercept is 0, comma, 4, which you could tell just by looking at it anyway, because as an astute algebra student, you know that that back number, so it's y equals mx plus b, you know the b part is the y-coordinate of the y-intercept. So we're all done with that. All right, now how do we find x and y-intercepts? Now here's a trick. You don't have to get it into this y equals mx plus b form if you don't want to. Matter of fact, I would recommend not bothering. So let's look at this one. If we want to find the x-intercept, what we want to do is we want to plug in 0 for y. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the equation they gave us, and instead of 3x put minus 4y, we're going to go 3x minus 4 times 0 equals 12. Now, 4 times 0 is 0. Anything times 0 is 0. So that sucker is gone. And that leaves you 3x equals 12, which means divide both sides by th 3, right? Divide this by 3, divide this by 3, right? 3 will divide away because 3 over 3 makes 1, so it's x, 1x if you like, equals 4. So there you go. So the x-intercept, we haven't answered it, the x-intercept is 4 comma 0. Not 4. 4 alone is not the intercept. Intercepts are points, so they have to have coordinates. So you have to have a 4, comma, then the 0. So for an x-intercept, it'll always be 0 for the back number. Now for the y-intercept, it's going to be a little bit different. Hold on one second. Let me put this over here. Okay, what do we do for the y-intercept? Well, it's the same idea, except 
you just have to put 0 in for x this time instead of 0 in for y, right? Okay, so let's see here. So 3 times 0 minus 4y. So that gives you 3 times, excuse me, 3 times 0 makes it all go away, so it's just minus 4y, right? So 3 times 0 minus 4y. So that gives you minus 4y is equal to 12. So how do you get rid of the minus 4? Well, you just divide both sides by negative 4. And if you do it to the left, you got to do it to the right. Okay? So that leaves you y on the right or the left hand side, excuse me, equals negative 3. So then what's your intercept? 0 because x is 0. You put 0 right in here for x. So it's 0 comma negative 3. There's your y intercept. Didn't even have to make it y equals mx plus b form or anything. None of that was required. You just had to substitute 0 in, see right there, 0 in for x. So that's the x-intercept. The y-intercept, you substitute um, 0 in for x. The x-intercept, you substitute 0 in for y. You always flip-flop them. Okay? And if you're lost, just remember the picture. If you're in an x-intercept, that means your y-value is 0. You haven't gone up or down at all. And if you're at a y-intercept, your x-value is 0. Now, what about y equals 5x? Well, now, an astute student might realize, hey, wait a second, there's no b on the back end of this. What the heck? Where's the b? You know, y equals mx, 5x. So you know your slope is 5, but what the heck is b? Um, so let's try it. So let's do the x-intercept thing. So you take y equals 5x, and you substitute 0 in for y for x. It doesn't really matter. Matter of fact, I'll do the y-intercept first, just for the heck of it. Okay, so if you put 0 in for x instead of that, what are you going to get? You're going to get 0, right? Because 5 times 0 is 0, which means automatically your intercept is 0, comma 0, right? Think about it, right? If x was 0, then y is 0, because 5 times 0 is 0. But the same token, if y was 0, yeah, I'll do it over here. If it was y equals 5x, and I put 0 in for y, so I say, okay, 0 equals 5x. If you divide both sides by 5, what's going to happen? Oopsie. If you do it over here, when you have 0 over 5, if you have nothing and divide amongst 5 people, then guess what everybody gets? Nothing, right? So you end up with 0, 0 over there. So you're going to see it either way you do it. If you do the x-intercept or the y-intercept, it's going to work out the same. Okay, namely that you have um, 0, 0 for both of them. Why? Well, because 0, 0 is that very special point in the center of the graph called the origin, right? So once I knew that one was 0, 0, then I knew the other one is 0, 0. Because if you go through 0, 0, that's on both axes. So it counts for both of them. So the x-intercept and the y-intercept are the same point. And honestly, you don't even have to do it twice. You can just do the one time. You can just do x-intercept or just do y-intercept. Either way will work. But 0, 0 is both. Right? In fact, both x-int and y-int. Cool? And again, you don't have to bother with the whole x-intercept work or the y-intercept work. Just do one of them. And then once you know it's 0, 0, then that's automatically both of them. At least it is for a line. Quadratics and stuff, you know, parabolas, those might go through more than once. So, um, But in a line, if it goes through 0, 0, that's it. All right. I will meet you back here for the next pages. Oopsie. When we deal with some other stuff about graphing. So I'll see you back here then for some um, special lines.